Hey you guys, in this video we're going to be looking at EGIO, which is a gaming community and like cloud environment server host that I've had for like six years now. It's a bit of an OG video, I used to make coding videos like this more in the past and uh, been kind of wanting to get back into them. But before we get rolling, I want to show you my settings here. This is Debian testing bookworm with Cinnamon 5.2.7. I think I screwed something up when I was tinkering with it because now I have like two graphics cards listed here. I only have one, but yeah, if you were interested in my desktop and in the past, I've like zoomed in on the thing that I'm working on, but that's a little cumbersome. So I'm trying fractional scaling with cinnamon. It's interesting that it even has it. It does say that it's experimental, but it's set to this one is set to 125. My other monitor is set to hundred percent but this one's set to 125 and it, it looks okay to me. It might be a little bit blurry, but you guys can let me know what you think of it. So yeah, in this one, we're gonna be looking at EGIO's infrastructure. And when I think of EGIO, I think of two pieces, the infrastructure portion itself, like where all of the servers and everything run, and that's provisioned with Terraform, which is what we're gonna be focusing on in this video. And there's another portion called salt. And if you're familiar with the other videos that I've done regarding like configuration management, I've talked about Ansible. Salt is a lot like Ansible. It's just different. And I'm not gonna be talking about salt in this video. It's just an important piece that you'll see towards the end, but I won't really dive in. If you want me to talk about salt and go deeper, I can, but um, it's just kind of a separate thing and it'd be weird to combine the two in a single video. So let's focus on the infrastructure portion, which is Terraform. So if you're not familiar with Terraform, it is a CLI written in Go. It's portable, it runs anywhere on anything, and it sets up cloud infrastructure. There's a lot of other tools like it. Uh, cloud formation is probably the most common one from AWS. I know Azure has one, and there's some other tools that are very similar to Terraform, but Terraform was arguably the first on the scene that sets up infrastructure across many different clouds. And I think that that's really its, its power is that it can touch AWS, Vulture, and Linode, which is where EGIO is. And obviously it can, it can handle pretty much any cloud environment, including custom cloud environments. It's a really, really cool tool and I've used it for a long time. So what we're going to be doing here is setting up a bunch of servers in Linode. And I'm using like a, a dev account that I created because I don't want to accidentally wreck a bunch of servers that are in production right now. But I've imported the Vulture server that I have, and I'll show you that in a second. And then there's some other stuff in AWS. So this is going to be an example of Terraform managing resources across three completely different clouds. And I think it's pretty cool. So we'll start out by looking at the data reference, and this is a Route 53 zone in AWS, and it's just EGIO. And this is a data reference because this route isn't actually created here, it's created in the domains and certs module. So the actual route is created here, notice it says resource instead of data. And I also create some certificates so that we can secure the domain and all that stuff, but that's not used outside of this module, only this route is. So we reference the route here and then we use it downstream. So I create an AWS route 53 record and we plug fake-rust.eg.io into it. And as you can see, we're using the data record for the zone ID. And even though this is an AWS resource, I'm plugging a Vulture instance into it. That's pretty cool. Outside of managing multiple clouds, setting up stuff like a firewall inside of here is really, really cool. Obviously doing it through the UI is a thing, but if you create a whole bunch of servers with a whole bunch of rules, it gets really cumbersome. So being able to just say, hey, I need a bunch of new rules, copy and paste these, or you can use a dynamic. Actually, I don't think dynamics work at the resource level, but there are other ways that you can loop this and create them programmatically. So this is a Vulture resource. The Rust server is still running in Vulture. It's gonna move over to Linode at some point. But Rust is actually kind of a difficult server to host. If you touch like any of its data, it decides to do a wipe. So the way that we look at the Rust server is once it's live, you just leave it there and update it when it needs it. 
So if we need to do any hardware work, we leave it until the end of the wipe or the beginning of the next wipe so that it doesn't cause an outage. But anyway, we also have a modded Rust server and this one runs in Linode. And you can see that this resource is practically the same but the Linode resource is quite a bit different. So we have Vulture, sets the plan, the region, the firewall group ID. Since I imported this, I had to ignore some lifecycle changes because this will force a rebuild of the server, which is really easy to do in Vulture, apparently. Over on the Linode side, it's kind of the same thing. They both have region, they both have a plan or an image type, or that's the type. So Vulture calls it a plan, whereas Linode calls it a type. It's basically the same thing. So the way that Salt works is that there is a master and a minion, and you need to kind of bootstrap your servers. So you do that with a cloud init script. And of course we set a private IP so that we can configure it through to firewalls. I also create a master instance. It's basically the same thing, only it's a very small instance that just kind of sits there and hosts the Salt master. But that's pretty much all there is to say about this state. So when we actually want to see these changes, well, before I do that, let me show you. This is Linode. Uh, there's nothing here. There are no Linodes running. There are no firewalls running. And here are my stack scripts. You see that there's just two. I set them up last night and they run on Debian 11, so I couldn't plug them into the wrong OS. So we'll go back to the Linode. See, there's nothing there. So now what we'll do is run terraform plan and what this will do is tell me what is going to change in my infrastructure definition so rust vanilla is already up there's nothing that needs to change with it so nothing shows up in the plan for it but right here we're going to be creating a new modded server and a new master a new salt master server so looking at the the plan tldr says six to add zero to change, zero to destroy. And that is exactly what I'm looking for because we're creating a salt master, we're creating a modded rest server, we're creating a pair of firewalls and a pair of records, AWS Route 53 records. So we're not touching anything else and that includes the vanilla server. So this is exactly what I want. Now I'll run Terraform apply, which actually just runs a plan again but I'll confirm that nothing has changed, which obviously it hasn't, and then we'll run the plan. So it, it might seem silly to run the plan every time, but you would be surprised because sometimes the plan actually reaches out to the cloud environment and checks for changes for some resource or resources. Normally just looks in the TF state file and compares it against the TF files, everything you've written, but this is really simple, so I wouldn't expect anything to change. So what it's going to do is create the instances because we need the IP addresses before we can create the records or the firewalls. So Terraform is just kind of smart enough to figure out what comes first. So this is the Linode instance master ID. And then in the firewall, we reference Vulture instance and Linode instance. I think this is really cool. I provision the servers with stack scripts because uh, they need to be kind of seeded with salt stuff. It's like a, a cloud init script if you're familiar with other cloud environments. So going into the Linode manager, we see there are two servers running now. The plan just finished, which means we also have firewalls and there they are. And this was all provisioned with Terraform. So I'm going to give it a couple seconds or a couple minutes actually before I do anything with this because those cloud init scripts which are located here. Linode calls them stack scripts. Vulture has the same thing. I don't remember what they're called, but I, but I think probably every cloud environment VPS provider has init scripts because sometimes you need to do stuff on the instance before it is fully up and running like <laughs> seeding salt. I guess while we're waiting for the init scripts to finish, I'll show you a couple CLIs that I, I wrote to support all of this. This is a, a very basic CLI wrapper that goes through all of my modules and makes sure that they're updated with the latest uh, stuff in the lock files. It also does a plan. So if there's something, this runs as part of CI. So. Uh, if there is something that has changed outside of uh, what I'm working with here, it'll cause a CI build to fail. That's what this detailed exit code bit is. 
But I also run a validate to make sure the HCL is good. This is Ruby. <laughs> That's kind of one of my favorite languages, especially to write CLIs in. It's just very simple. It's like basically bash, but with easier loops and stuff like that. So speaking of salt, I haven't really shown you much in the way of the salt states and I, I'm probably not going to because this code is pretty, uh, it's not quite as polished as uh, some of my other code. But I can go deeper into salt in another video. Uh, what we're gonna do here is wait for salt to bootstrap itself and then I have a separate bootstrap state that uh, sets up ZRAM, the user stuff, uh, SSH, some mail notifications, a whole bunch of other good stuff, but that's kind of what we're gonna finish this, this video with. Um, so I mentioned, <laughs> I mentioned the infra CLI, but I also have another CLI, which also has CI, uh, but it too is written in Ruby, and it's basically just a wrapper for all of these uh, salt commands, because salt has kind of weird syntax, and I have trouble remembering it sometimes. So we're gonna use that CLI to check the status of things. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I think I need to clean out that key because I've, I've used it before for testing. So we'll run EGCTL, my clever name, check the status of the minions, and there they are. So we just bootstrapped two servers from start to finish. One is a, a salt master, the other is a salt minion. You might notice that the Vulture instance isn't in there, the vanilla Rust server, and that's because it's plugged into the actual salt master. I don't wanna set up like it was a little overkill to set up, set the Vulture instance up to point at Salt too, so I didn't. <laughs> so since the modded server is plugged into Salt, we can do Salt apply, eg modded Rust fake, just like that. This this uh, shell is called Fish. Highly recommend it. Maybe I'll do a video on Fish someday. It's a very very good shell. It's pretty much changed my CLI workflow. But that's it. What this command is going to do is it's going to return a list of changes that have been made through salt and the instance will have been uh, fully provisioned as far as EGIO servers go. It's called EG modded rust and uh, salt uses something called a top file. It sets up the topology of your infrastructure. I can show you this one. Um, this is also pretty <laughs> This is also pretty messy, but uh, you can see the idea like uh, at one point we had consolidated game servers that ran a bunch of um, bunch of like different game servers. So we had one server that ran Rust, Gary's Mod, Minecraft, and it, it got a little out of control. But you, you manage, you can manage what is installed on your instance or anything through salt using topology or uh, these top files, but in this case, we just ran uh, individual state, which is bootstrap. So we could also do uh, rust.modded, and it will install a modded Rust server just like that. So that's about it for this video. Um, the only thing that's going to happen next is Salt is just going to return a bunch of changes, and we will have had a, uh, a Rust server installed and set up running on that instance, or it'll fail and um, I'll have to figure out why it failed, but I don't think it will. These states are pretty solid. But yeah, that is it. So this video is quite a bit different than the videos I've done uh, over the past couple of years. This is basically live with very, it's, there's no script. I'm just kind of talking about the code while looking at it. It feels more like a work demo than anything else, <laughs> but I'll be able to edit pieces together because um, these coding videos are actually really, really hard to make but I'm making them for you because I've been kind of feeling the whole coding thing lately and you guys have asked for coding videos for quite a while and uh, I'm happy to be interested in it and to oblige you at this time. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.